Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the pressurization system in a Citation Encore. The Citation Encore is the newest model in the Citation 500 series, and it uses a digital pressurization controller, which is a very nice upgrade compared to the older analog uh, pneumatic system that was used in the older Citations. This digital pressurization controller is also used in the Citation XL and XLS. The cabin pressure and the cabin differential gauge that you see in the upper left corner remains the same across all of the citations. This is still an analog gauge that displays the uh, current cabin altitude and the differential. So the uh, bigger needle indicates the cabin pressure. Right now we're at about uh, 2,600 feet above sea level. And the smaller needle indicates the differential. Uh, on the inner ring, it shows that we have zero differential because we're sitting on the ground with our engine shut down. The digital pressurization controller is kind of the heart of the whole system. It's this little uh, gauge right here, and operationally, this is an incredibly easy system to use. It uh, is sort of a set it and forget it system, so when everything is working normally and working as it should, uh, it's uh, a much uh, more comfortable, easy to use system than the older analog uh, system. And really the issues uh, where a pilot needs to understand this system come in just in understanding the logic of what's going on with the uh, computer, as well as if things go wrong, how to handle a few contingencies for uh, things that might break or go wrong in flight. I'll start by powering up the avionics and uh, once we have 28 volt normal DC power applied, this will uh, boot up the computer and I'll show you how the system functions under normal conditions. Here's the display with normal DC power applied. The top window labeled set alt is for setting the altitude of the field elevation for your destination airport. In this case, we just landed at an airport that is 2,600 feet above of uh, sea level, and uh, therefore it was set to 2,600 feet, and uh, we allowed the computer to pretty much manage the pressurization for us. If we were to go to uh, another airport, let's say we were to take off out of here and uh, go to an airport that was 500 feet above sea level, we would take this needle, or uh, take this knob, twist it, and set 500 feet into the window. It's really as simple as that. From there on out, the pressurization computer will manage the cabin pressure and uh, make the changes as smooth and as comfortable as possible. The bottom window, labeled rate, is to show you the cabin rate of change. Right now it's showing a negative 300 foot per minute descent. Clearly that's not the case because we're parked on the ground with our engine shut down. And I'm not sure why this gives erroneous readings uh, sometimes when you're parked and shut down. That's actually a, a common thing to see. But uh, once we uh, start up the engines, and definitely when we're flying, uh, we get a, uh, a normal rate of uh, zero there if the cabin is unchanged, or maybe 500 feet per minute descent during a descent uh, would be a normal indication. And that's just showing your cabin rate of change. There's two buttons on the display face. One is labeled FL for flight level. The other is labeled EXER for exercise. I shut everything down for a few minutes to save battery power on the aircraft battery while I talk. The way this system works under normal circumstances is it has something known as an auto schedule. The auto schedule is a set of uh, computer programming that tells the system to maintain the most comfortable cabin altitude possible under the given conditions. In order to know what the best conditions are, the computer needs to know what altitude the aircraft is flying at. In order to get that information, it relies on air data computer number two. Air data computer number two must be online and connected to the digital pressurization controller in order for this system to work. In a Citation Excel or XLS, this would be tied to air data computer number one, which
which is a very slight difference, but otherwise the system is basically the same. The digital pressurization controller utilizes something known as a climb solenoid and a dive solenoid to regulate the pressure in the cabin. The climb and dive solenoids are connected to the outflow valves in the rear of the aircraft. When they receive electrical signals from the digital pressurization controller, they will either open or close the outflow valves accordingly to adjust the pressure inside the cabin. As the aircraft climbs after takeoff, the computer will maintain the cabin pressure from the takeoff field elevation as the aircraft climbs until it reaches the auto schedule boundary, which is a few PSI below the max cabin differential. As it reaches close to that max cabin differential, it will allow the cabin to start climbing at about 600 feet per minute. Aircraft is established in cruise. The digital pressurization controller can sense that the aircraft is in cruise because it sees from the air data computer that the altitude has remained unchanged. When the cab, when the aircraft begins descending, again it can see from the air data computer that the aircraft has begun descending, and it will automatically slowly start to decrease the cabin altitude at about 500 feet. Okay, now let's look for a minute at possible failure modes. The first possibility and possibly the most common potential failure here is if you had a disconnection with air data computer number two or if air data computer number two completely failed. To simulate that, I'm going to pull the circuit breaker for air data computer number two and show you what happens. There, we've just induced a, a failure of air data computer number two, and the system automatically reverts to a mode known as isobaric mode. Isobaric mode is another way of saying that the brains of the computer have failed. The, the controller is still working just fine. The electrical signal to the climb and the dive solenoids is working fine. Um, the, the system is still perfectly capable of regulating pressure to the cabin, but there's no more brains there. There's no more uh, intelligence to it because the air data computer is offline. Therefore, the pilot needs to act as the air data computer and tell the system what uh, it needs to monitor and what it needs to see. We know that we are in isobaric mode right now because of the amber light in the upper left corner of the display. When we have isobaric mode active on the uh, controller, it changes the field elevation or the destination field elevation to the last known altitude at the time of the failure. From that point forward, our job as the pilot would be simply to twist the knob and set in whatever altitude we are going to be cruising at. So for example, if we're going to cruise at 25,000 feet, I would set in flight level 250 when in isobaric mode. And that tells the computer, treat all the calculations as though we are cruising at 25,000 feet and manage the cabin accordingly. When operating in isobaric mode, when it comes time to descend and land, we would press the FL button for flight level. When we press that, it sets the, uh, the uh, last field elevation that we had selected in there. And let's say that we're planning to land at an airport that is uh, 1,700 feet, 1,700 feet above sea level. We would set in 1,700 while descending, and the computer would make all its calculations accordingly to lower the cabin pressure, or I should say lower the cabin altitude uh, to set up for landing 
at a field that is 1,700 feet above sea level. If for some reason we decided to not descend and land and we wanted to continue cruising, all we would need to do is press the flight level button and select whatever flight level we are deciding to cruise at. So right here I set flight level 300 or 30,000 feet as the new cruise altitude and we could cruise to another airport at that altitude and then press the flight level button again, set in say a field elevation of 900 feet that we're gonna descend and land at and uh, the computer would manage everything accordingly. If for any reason the air data computer becomes available again in the same flight, isobaric mode will automatically revert back to the normal mode. So let me bring the air data computer to back online. And you can see it reverted to normal operation and uh, has a field level, uh, set landing altitude. The, the field elevation for our destination airport is 900 feet. And it would uh, manage everything associated with the pressurization accordingly. I've turned the avionics off again in order to save our aircraft battery. But the last mode I want to talk about is something known as high altitude mode. High altitude mode with the digital pressurization controller is any time we set a, feet, a, a landing elevation greater than 8,000 feet above sea level. So let's say we're going to Telluride, Colorado and we dial in the the uh, um, landing elevation of 9,600 feet above sea level. Because that, that field elevation is greater than 8,000 feet above sea level, the system uses something known as high altitude mode. That uses a different auto schedule and um, it changes the uh, profile basically of how the cabin uh, climbs and descends in order to match that landing elevation. When climbing out in high altitude mode after departure from an airport, the cabin pressure will not remain at the same elevation as the departure airport. It will start to climb steadily towards 7,800 feet cabin altitude. The reason 7,800 feet cabin altitude is used in high altitude mode is because that is the cabin pressure or the cabin altitude that would uh, equal max differential at the max operating altitude of 45,000 feet. So when we're cruising at 45,000 feet at max differential, we have a cabin altitude of 7,800. So it slowly climbs to 7,800 knowing that you're going to be landing above that. Next, it will sense a descent. When it senses the aircraft is, is descending and when the aircraft is below flight level 250, below 25,000 feet, it will begin to raise the cabin altitude to 1,500 feet above the set landing altitude. So if you set in Telluride, Colorado at 9,600 feet, it would begin to slowly raise the cabin altitude from a cabin altitude of 7,800 up to about, uh, my math is not good, tens, uh, about 11,100 feet cabin altitude. That's 1,500 feet above Telluride to prepare for landing at Telluride. The last detail to be aware of is how high altitude mode affects the cabin alt enunciator. Normally this enunciator would be uh, illuminated any time the cabin altitude climbs above 10,000 feet above sea level. That's the standard configuration. If the digital pressurization controller is set to a field elevation above 8,000 feet, meaning a high altitude field, the cabin altitude enunciator is recalibrated to only illuminate if the cabin altitude goes above 14,500 feet. That's because there's many cases where, like I just mentioned at Telluride, 
the cabin altitude must come above 10,000 feet when landing, and that's a normal indication. Now, the last scenario I'll talk about is when things really start going wrong. There's always the possibility that the circuitry of the digital pressurization control might fail. And for instance, the, the actual circuit board itself might for some reason fail, or you might have uh, an electrical issue where uh, there's no longer power to the digital pressurization controller. Because remember, uh, the digital pressurization controller is not part of the emergency bus in this aircraft. So if you even had to go to the Emer bus, um, that would essentially kill all power to the digital pressurization control. In those situations, we have something that most Citation pilots affectionately know as the cherry picker. That is this manual up and down control valve in the middle of the panel. To use the cherry picker, all the pilot needs to do is click from auto into manual on the system select. And uh, then from here, the, the way the cherry picker works, you're actually physically um, opening and closing some valves that will use the cabin pressure differential between the inside of the cabin and the outside of the cabin to control the outflow valves. So when I move this up and down, I'm physically moving some valves behind here that will uh, cause the, the differential to either suck the outflow valves open or push the outflow valves shut. And uh, that will control the cabin differential or that will control the cabin pressure. Uh, the thing to remember with the cherry picker lever is that uh, the greater the differential between the cabin and the outside, the more quickly it's going to respond. So if you're in cruise and you're at max differential and you go into manual mode and you start using the cherry picker to, to either raise or lower the cabin altitude, um, it's, it's almost like tapping on the, the cherry picker. You just barely, barely want to touch it at all. Um, otherwise you're really, really going to feel it in your ears. Um, whereas down low at a much lower differential, uh, you can be a little bit more aggressive with it, and it won't respond quite as quickly. When it comes to the Emer dump switch, the big difference between the Encore and the older citations with this digital pressurization controller now is that the Emer dump switch is actually an electrical connection. So uh, what this means is that when we lift this guarded switch and we we flip this switch from norm up to Emer dump on, uh, that is actually creating an electrical connection that is just sending a constant signal to the uh, climb solenoid, telling it to raise the cabin altitude um, to climb the cabin, and uh, it's opening the dump valves to allow air to escape out of the dump valves. So uh, again, if we go to the Emer bus on our electrical system. If we don't have 28 volts normal DC power, this Emer dump switch is uh, basically rendered useless and we would need to use the uh, manual cherry picker um, lever in order to dump the cabin if, if it really came to that.